Hello friends, this video on organisms and population part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the next factor that we are going to discuss is light. So we have already covered temperature and soil. So third important parameter is light. Now why do we need light? Do you think that uh, uh, light okay if you think of plants we can very quickly say that yes plants need light because plants perform photosynthesis in presence of light and photosynthesis is the process by which they prepare their food so plants are depending on light what about animals animals also perform a lot of activities only in presence of light and secondly animals are also dependent on plants for their food so that means also animals are dependent on light so light plays an important role for plants as well as animals both terrestrial as well as aquatic because a lot of people think that for the aquatic organisms they do not receive the direct light so light is not important for them but we will see that how light is important for all types of organisms so let's talk about plants first. So as I mentioned, plants need light to perform photosynthesis. Photo means light and synthesis means to prepare. So plants prepare their own food in presence of light. So what happens during photosynthesis? In photos, plants take in carbon dioxide through the stomata, that is the tiny pores of the leaves. They take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and this carbon dioxide combines with water which they receive from the soil and in presence of sunlight, it forms food in the form of glucose and it also releases out oxygen and a lot of energy is produced during the process. So this is what happens during photosynthesis. Now since plants are capable of preparing their own food, that is why they are also known as autotrophs. Auto means self. So they are self-dependent for their food. So they are autotrophs. Whereas all other animals which depend on plants either directly or indirectly for their food, they are known as heterotrophs. Now, even human beings are heterotrophs because we also depend on plants or animals for our food. So, except plants, all other animals are termed as heterotrophs. Hetero means others. So, organisms which depend on others for their food are heterotrophs. So, here we see that light is very important for plants being autotrophs. So not only to prepare food, there is another important concept in plants where light plays an important role. So plants respond to light in many different ways. There are different sets of plants which respond to light in different ways. And this phenomenon is known as photoperiodism. So with the concept of photoperiodism, we get to know that light is not only essential for plant growth, the duration of light exposure is equally important. That is for how long the plant is exposed to light. Now, different plants need different duration of light exposure. So for how long the plant is exposed to light, that directly controls the flowering of plants. Now, for all the plants which produce flowers, so when will that plant produce flowers is strongly dependent on for how many hours it has been exposed to light. So based on the number of hours of exposure to light which is needed by a plant, they are categorized into three types. That is long day plants, short day plants and day neutral plants. So these are the three types of plants and it is on the basis of their uh, requirement of light exposure that is duration of light exposure that they need in order to flower. So that, that's the basis of classification of these three plant types. So let us see each of these. So we start with short day plant. Short day means the day should be shorter in, in simple words. So they need long nights. So they need minimum number of hours of darkness. So there is a minimum number of hours of darkness which needs to be satisfied for these plants. So there is a threshold value for the nights. So the nights has to be greater than the minimum number of hours. So the darkness, the period of darkness should always be greater than the minimum required number of hours of darkness. So they, these plants flower when they are exposed to long nights. 
so here the night should be long and the day should be short that is why they are called short day plants so examples of such plants are coffee chrysanthemum strawberry these plants they flower during long nights so they want less number of hours of exposure to light the th second type of plants are the long day plants so these plants they need maximum number of hours of darkness that is they want a specific maximum number of hours of darkness that is if the darkness should not exist more than these many these many hours so darkness should be less than the mentioned number of hours so that means darkness should exist for a smaller period of time right so in please understand this when i say they need maximum number of hours of darkness that doesn't mean that they need more number of hours that means that they should have darkness they should be exposed to darkness for less than a specific mentioned number of hours so let's say that mentioned hours is x hours so they should be exposed to darkness so darkness should be exposed to these plants for less than x hours so they want less number of hours of darkness therefore they want they flower when they are exposed to short nights the night should be shorter and the day should be long so they are long day plants now why i wrote this sentence in this way because the sentence might sound confusing because in most of your textbooks this is how it is written so that creates a lot of confusion to students so when it says that it needs maximum number of hours of darkness that means it says that it needs a value for and that should be the maximum value of the number of hours it should be exposed to darkness so let's say if that maximum number of hours is x so it should be exposed to darkness for less than x hours so that's the concept so examples of such plants are lettuce spinach potatoes so all these plants they flower during the long days so they want long days and short nights the third type of plants are the day neutral plants and these day neutral plants here flowering does not depend upon the exposure to light duration so they may initiate flowering after a certain stage or after a certain age so it is like kind of independent to how long the days are or how long the nights are so examples of such plants are roses cucumbers tomatoes and that is why now in understanding this concept of photoperiodism you might understand that why certain plants flower only during certain season for example think of some of the short day plants which need shorter days so they generally tend to flower during the spring season or the autumn season because during those seasons the days are shorter again if you think of the long day plants they might flower during the summer season because the days are longer during summer season and that is why you have a lot of plants which flower only during certain specific season whereas plants like these which are not really dependent on light duration it doesn't matter whether it is summer or spring or autumn they will flower at when they are prepared to flower that is once they reach a certain stage or a certain age they will start flowering on their own so this is the concept of photoperiodism so here also we see that light plays a very crucial role in the flowering of plants thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.